What's good, my YouTube fam? It's Retro Gamer Yasuke here, and today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the emulator known as Duck Station. So let's run this how to emulator edition. All right, fam. In order to get your Duck Station running properly, the first thing we're going to need is to download a program by the name of 7-Zip. Let's get it. Okay, first things first, we need to get 7-Zip. So we're gonna head over to our browser. We're gonna type in www.7zip.org. Enter. Links will be provided in the description below. I'm using a Windows system. So for my Windows-based system, I'm gonna click this 64-bit and I'm gonna click download. It's going to download for me and I'm going to open the file. I'm going to click yes. It's going to ask me where I want it. I do want it in my programs file. So I'm going to install it. Boom. Now that's done. That's the first step. The next thing you're going to need is a BIOS file. Now, I could give you the nerd version of what that is, but I might as well give you the short version. It's basically the startup screen. So I can't tell you where to get the BIOS file. The only reason why I can't is because, well, everybody else doesn't. So I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube either. So I'm going to attempt to try something. So I'm going to need you guys to look, listen, and pay attention because I'm also going to tell you where to get the games or code name R O M S. All right. For this part, you want to head over back to your browser. For this, I will not be providing a link in the description below for obvious reasons. You want to come to this place, type in these random assortment of letters. That will take you to this random place with all of these things. We are looking for this. So we click on it. We are going to scroll down just a little bit until we see this. We're going to follow this bar all the way here and we're going to click on that. And it should do so. Boom. I, I messed up, so that's why it's there twice. <laughs> All right. For the next part, we're going to um, look for these. We're going to go click on this. This is the format that you need for this. And this equals duck station. Okay. So now that you're here, you click on any one of these. Now I know this looks kind of sketchy, right? You got some of this, you got some of that. You scroll down here a little bit. It looks like a big old gap. What's going on? Woe is me. Woe is me. Why the flip is that? Don't worry, this place is 100% safe. No cap, no cap, I promise you. All right, so you're gonna come here. Once you find something that you like, I'm into these. So I'm clicking on this. Boom. It gives you a clearer description of what it is. This, where it's at, blah, blah, blah. When it came out, who do, do, do. D, 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 da, 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 right, right, right. Gives you a little bit of these. Now, if you're an anime fan such as I, once you see one of these, you're good. You're going to click on this. And seeing that this is a to this thing, you are going to get both of these. 
Now you might be asking yourself, what is the difference between this and this? Well, whenever you click on these, they always provide a file that's stated that's called README. And I suggest you do that so you know what you just got. But this is, a, this is exactly what you just got. All right, fam. Now for the Duck Station emulator. Now there's three places you can get this thing. Duckstation.org, emulatorzone.com, or my favorite place, which we're going to do. All right, fam. This is going to be the last time we open up our browser. We're going to come over here. We're going to go to my favorite place, vimslayer.net. I will provide a link in the description. We're going to head over to emulation layer. We're going to scroll down until we see PlayStation. Then we see Duck Station. As a Windows-based system user, such as myself, I will be clicking this X64 right here. It seems like the last update was on February 22nd, four days before my birthday this year. Dope. All right, once that's downloaded, we can get out of here. Now that you have everything you possibly need to run this emulator, you might need one more thing. And that's one of these, a controller. Now this is an Xbox One PDP controller that I use for Windows. Now you can use a wired or a wireless controller. As long as it works for your personal computer, it's going to work for DuckStation. So let's run the program. All right, fam. Now that we got everything downloaded, we're going to go to our file manager. I like to hit the start button. There we go. Then we go to downloads. All right. Now we can either move this to the desktop or we can do this right here. I'm going to do it right here. It really does not matter. I'm going to right click duck station. I'm going to go to show more options. And seeing that you downloaded 7-zip, 7-zip will be a, one of those options. You want to extract to duck station it's basically going to put it in its own folder if you do subs extract here there's a 50 50 chance you're going to be overpopulated with a whole bunch of files all scattered around it's going to look something like this and you don't really want that now this is your application but here is your bios this is where you oh that's interesting it appears that this iteration of DuckStation came with its own set of BIOS files. So that's a win-win. Okay, so we're going to open DuckStation by double-clicking the application. All right. See, we have some changes here. All of this is according to the update. So you can either skip this if you don't like what you see, you could remind later if you don't know what it is and you want to check it out later, or you could download and install. Me personally, I download and install it. I want my stuff to work to the best of its capability. Now that it's working, we can exit out of here. Boom. There it is. Now, this is a side note and a gold and man, this is gold what I'm about to give you. So if you're about to use DuckStation for OBS to live stream or even record, you don't want this parentheses to say developer or DEV. You rather it say anything else other than developer mode. Because if this says developer mode, OBS tends to be buggy, glitchy, and it's going to mess up your stream. Trust me, I know. First things first, we go to settings and we're going to test our BIOS. I'm going to auto detect and the BIOS that they provided, it works. So that's a Japan flag. I used the Japan. This is USA. I used the USA, Canada, and this is East uh, Australia, Europe, and this is the power region flag. Okay. We're done with that. Now for our game list. Now, wherever your games are stored, you're going to 
click this right here and you're going to search for it. I leave my games on an external hard drive. I got me a T7 shield. It's only one terabyte. I'm already, I'm already needing another one. So if you're going to get yourself one of these, make sure you get one that's good for you. All right. We go to this right here. PlayStation one ROMs. That's what I named my folder. And it says scanning recursively takes more time, but it will identify files in subdirectories. You want this because some disc, some games are multi-disc games or R-O-M-S. So we click yes. Now I have 400 and um plus games. So I've got to wait for this to uh, get done scanning before I do anything. Because I don't want to overload my system or I don't want it to not search everything properly. I want everything to work. So the next time I open my laptop and plug in my T7 shield, it works perfectly. All right. Now that that's working, I go to close. Boom. I want to maximize this. Now, this how to emulator edition is a part one of a part two. For part two, I will be showing you how to enhance your display and do memory cards, do this post uh, processing if you need it, achievements, all these other things that you may possibly need. All I'm doing for this one is showing you how to get it, where to get it, and how to start it. Basically, the bare bones. So. The last thing we possibly need, seeing that we have our games, we have our BIOS, we have everything except for our controller setup. So I want to go to system. I mean, I want to go to settings. I want to go to controllers and I want to click on this. Now I can do global settings, but I prefer to do this. If you have a second controller, you're going to click on this next. Now I using an Xbox One controller as previously stated. And yes, they are showing a PlayStation One controller. But if I wanted to, I can click on this D-pad right here and click up on my controller, boom. And as you can see, it didn't change. But that takes too long. I don't feel like doing all of that. So I'm gonna go to automatic mapping. Now, if you wanna use your keyboard or your mouse, you can possibly do that. I don't have the skills for that. So I'm going to use my Xbox One controller. Boom. Automatic mapping. Confirmed. If I don't like this, I can change it, but I'm going to leave it until I need it. Now what I am going to do is start one game to show you that it works. All-Star Slamming Dodgeball. Let's run it. And I'm going to point out the BIOS for you. Right now. That is the BIOS. That is stopping you right now from playing the game if you do not have the BIOS file. Luckily for you, you downloaded this version, so it's going to work. Now I'm going to press a button here. Got to wait. Got to wait. Boy, there's so many screens here. Now, sometimes you have a certain type of controller and you don't know you may need a digital controller instead of an analog controller. I, I set this to dig, uh, analog, so let's see if it works. It's not working. It's good. So now I know that it's not working. I go to settings. I go back to controllers. I go to here and change this to digital. Boom. It's already remapped and we're all good. Now I'm gonna press start. I'm in there like swimwear. Well, you got your duck station up and running. That's all there is to it. Now I could have showed you gameplay, but I decided I'm gonna do that in a second video because I like to do a lot of enhancements and make it look a little bit more closer to 1080p, a lot less CRTV-ish, but that's how I play. Now, I will be featuring another YouTuber who likes to play the regular way. 
so you'll get the best of both worlds in that second video. Tune in for that. Well, this is the end of the video. Like, comment, subscribe, do hit all those bells and whistles, and make sure you let me know in the comment section how I did, because this is my first and only tutorial video. Have a nice day. Peace.